be showing you the new IOD paint inlays. They're not a transfer, they're not a stencil, and they're not decoupage. You're literally going to embed paint into your project and make them hand painted. They've come out with two new paint inlays. We've got rose chintz and indigo, and today we're gonna to be playing with rose chintz. So just pulling off the knobs on this, the wood ones we're gonna leave on because we're gonna paint them in place. And we do that because these drawers inset all the way down. So it ensures that we don't get any paint on the inside where we don't want a sliding on these old drawer slides. Well, I won't usually sand the edges to make them good. It is like got a flaky varnish, so we're gonna clean it really good before we paint. Right. Zeb, your technique is excellent. And now it's back and forth like this. So we're gonna be using DIY's Farm Fresh. We think it'll pair really nice with the rose chintz. You can pick this up at jamierayvintage.com as well as the new inlays. We're gonna be doing, uh, I think, two coats on the base. And when we do the second coat, We'll probably not hit in here because that we need to save because when you put your paint inlay on, your paint has to be wet. Oh no, you're ruining that priceless antique. Don't do it, don't paint the wood. You should have sanded that down or stripped it. Are you whining over there? No, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm preemptively complaining for everybody. We're giving you the comments we're expecting. The finish has a little bit of a flakiness to it. The varnish is dried out. So we're hoping that that adds to the texture when we go to distress this with 220 grit sandpaper and just really gives us a lot of good variation in the tone of this. We're gonna have to do two coats of the Farm Fresh on here. All right, I got a piece of cardboard here, a little bit of a grid laid out. I'm going to attempt to make an oval. You will see why in just a little bit but it's harder than you think to make an oval. Circles are easier. So I'm gonna put that right there. All right, now I just wanna come off of the top of the circle, meet right there. Maybe we'll arch it up a little more. That's better. Sure, we'll go with that. Mostly an oval. Now Jamie's the one with the master plan for what we even need the oval for. So my plan is, I kinda wanna make it look almost like, I don't know, a frame. So I'm gonna trace this out. We'll put some molds here, maybe some molds down here. And then we will put the second coat all over the whole dresser, except for inside the frame. Because that we have to do right before we put the inlay in. Um, because that paint has to be wet. So if we painted the whole thing and then put the inlay on, it would be partially dry. So we're gonna paint on the outside, then we'll paint on the inside a little bit at a time and put the inlay in. Wait for it. Let me make sure. Even spacing between these no. knobs. Nope, nope. Oh yeah, they are, they're good. Okay. Does that look right? Yeah, I think, hold on, uh, hold on. To all pull right. all the drawers. All right, don't push hard, really light. You can do it. That's a lot light. I'm barely touching it. That very gone. All right. You like it? Uh, Ooh, like it's twisted a little this slightly way. Slightly twisted. But I think by the time we get the inlay on and paint it and distress it, I mean, maybe we go a little off to one side or the other. Okay. I think it'll be okay. Because okay. it's, it's really close. All right, these are the molds we're gonna use. Jamie's gonna work on that while I work on the inlay, tracing it. So I'm using Cameos and I'm kind of obsessed with this lady with the sheep, but I actually just want these two side parts. So that's why I'm using clay so I can just pick and choose what I want. Okay. 
So if you flip your mold over, you can use that to help release it without pulling it out. It's the easiest way to get your mold out. So I've got my top part, then I'm going to be taking part of it off, and then I'm gonna undo my cameo the same way. And there you go. So I've got both of these here. I do not want like this portion, I just want this. All right, now I'm gonna put these together on the top of my oval and that's gonna make my top. Ta-da! All right, Jamie, come, come advise me on what you want. So we can cut more sheets of this, which I'm hesitant to do because they kind of stagger it. So if you were doing a big repeating pattern, it would stagger a little bit. But if I lay this out here like this, I can get it on four sheets without having to do anything oh, weird. But it'll be on a diagonal. On a diagonal? Well, come look. Yeah, I think that doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't think the, it does either. The flowers go all different directions. So I'll cut it and then we'll, uh, we'll put it on there. I'm just gonna trace it real light. Okay, so second coat is going on. I'm trying to stay mostly outside of this. It's okay if I go over a little bit, but just so that we know where the where it is to it. And when I brush the paint here, I'm gonna go past where I stopped because I'm trying not to have like a big line of delineation from where I stopped and started. Okay, so this wow. is gonna just line up between the two keyholes. So now you can paint whatever and we'll line it up. I'm going past the line so that way I don't have like a clear circle. The nice thing is clay paint has such a difference in the dry time that you can really see where the opal was. <laughs> you're not supposed to do this much area, by the way. Yeah, you're supposed to go in small, like one sheet at a time. But since there's two of us, you know, we, we get away with doing stuff like that. Do we? We'll find out in a minute. Well, it doesn't have a built-in drying agent, so it's not as fast as the paint. Okay, I'm committed. You don't want to shift it. Just want to press it down onto the paint. Press and go. Press and go. So paint's super wet right now. Oh, we got way over over here. Some distressing might have to be in order. I think it'll be okay because it's not a solid pattern. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we could even come in with some little pieces if it looks funky and Feel her in? Yeah, fill it in. Maybe make it not quite ovally. Goes right there like that. Oh, they're not lined up on that one corner. Yeah, we we came close. Well, we'll like we'll get it wet with a little paintbrush and blend that little flower there. This one? No, this one here. Because you can oh, see. No, oh, this line is just the paint coming through. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I'm talking like we're a quarter inch this way than this way. Like we're under the knob and we're not. Oh under yeah, the it's fine. Okay, so we gotta get this wet. And then I'm gonna come over it with a rag. You don't need to hose it down. Cause it is paint, it will run. So I'm just gonna. It already looks cool just like that. Yeah, and we make it like a line in the paint from the paper and I'm actually okay with that. Oops, oh, shoot, move the door. We'll see what that looks like. Be soft. <laughs> Maybe it's just like cutting a transfer, no big deal. Yeah, except for this part moved off. Let's see, the camera will tell that we get, it actually looks pretty straight on there looking at it through I the camera. You, it's possible that the knobs aren't perfect either because handmade dresser. Is it smooth? No. We've got some mahogany bleed through. We're having a situation. We're definitely gonna need to distress some white wax, but it's time to spray. Can't go back now. Very judicious with your spraying. I don't know what happened down there. We got like a little ear poking out. We'll just distress that. Okay. 
<laughs> It'll wait like 30 seconds. <gasps> it's but perfect! Look at like that! A boss. Oh, and it looks like you're gonna be able to get another use out of that. Except for it has some stripes in it, so hey, maybe not. Hey, don't you worry about the stripes. Just take it off Definitely. in my in my grid pattern that I cut crazy on an angle. Because you are a boss, although it looks like the flowers are going down. I love how it kind of peels up distressed, like it's chippy old paint. Yeah, it's because of the brush strokes and the paint underneath. So you're saying it's user error on our part? No, it's a special technique. <laughs> Intentional. Intentional technique. You can't, you can't distress that good chippy like that. No. And also, this is chippy like the varnish underneath. So. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not using this on something else. There's like bleed through on the actual inlay. We could just do little projects and avoid that. I vote little projects. Oh, now that you peeled the paper, you can't even hardly tell my little thing down there was not yeah. cut straight. Oh, that's good. Although you can see these lines. It's all right. We're, we, I got an idea for that. We're gonna let it dry. And then I'm gonna get a little paintbrush. And I'm gonna reactivate the paint. And... Maybe. Or I'll just distress it. I think just distress it and you won't even know. I, I don't even, you can't even see it on camera. Yeah. Well, and also the DIY paint, when you get it wet, it activates it, which is why some of it comes. And this paint was like thick and soaking wet when I put it on there. But is that not amazing? That's cool. Is it cool. not a triumph? It is a triumph. It is a triumph. Seal this whole piece up. We're gonna go in with a little bit of DIY clear wax. If you're a first time waxer and you're looking at this and you're like, oh my goodness, it looks splotchy. It's not drying good. This is very typical of wax, especially with a porous chalk and clay type paint. Just give it some time, let it cure. It takes about 24 hours to really set up. It can take up to 30 days to cure all the way. So just be aware of that. And if it doesn't clear up in about a day and stop looking splotchy, you can always just come back and add more wax and even that out. All right, this has been sitting for a while. It's time to buff it. Mostly I'm just trying to knock off any high spots on the wax and it helps it harden too. So it doesn't have like a film on there if you buff off all the excess because it should have absorbed down in the paint. And if you want, you can do a high sheen finish. You can come back after buffing and put another coat of wax on there and it'll just continue to cure and harden and it'll be a really nice durable finish. Our brush is notorious for having lots of highs and lows. You can see that there's some areas that are darker, some areas that are lighter. It's one of the beauties of clay paint. It really gives you a great age distressed finish. Another thing that happened is there was kind of a flaky original finish. And so we had some bleed through that happened. And when we sanded it, it gave us this amazing texture and we went with it. We could have fixed it ahead of time, but I really wanted it to see what it would do through the paint. And overall, I'm really happy with it. I love how this turned out between the highs and the lows of the farm fresh, the little bits of original finish peeking through, and the new IOD paint inlay. I think we really got a great age look. The only tricky part was making the oval. That actually went a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be, and it's a really great, unique look on this. We were gonna do molds, but we liked the inlay so much that we decided to not do molds. We just kept it simple. To achieve this look, you can shop at jamierayvintage.com for the paint products and inlays we used. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.